So how do we do this? So you set form mode, so we need to start a form. And um, I'm going to just use a plane on the, uh, on the front here and pull up a plane. And the dimensions are just arbitrary. And I think the default here is two. I changed this to four. And uh, I think I need to turn this back on and that menu pops up on my second screen so for a moment I have to go into uh, or out of um, full screen mode and go back into it that's pretty annoying so in multi-monitor mode Fusion 360 still has a few issues um, and that goes for Windows as well as for my Mac here by the way so modify um, we have our grid here and the first thing I need to t uh, do is, uh, and I click the right mouse button here, that is pre-populated with some menu items, which you can find also in here. So insert point is probably the most unintuitively named <laughs> um, menu selection here in uh, Fusion 360. So I'm going to start down here and here and here, and I'm going to cancel that because I'm going to add symmetry first. Um, it asks you to select two, fax, uh, two faces, uh, one on each side of the symmetry line. So symmetry, of course, so I don't have to do all this twice. So modify insert point and um, the red, when it snaps to the red point, that's the uh, center point of that edge. And it, it's not that important that it's the center point for this particular exercise. So then uh, I'm going to change here in the utilities to box view mode so what i use mostly for modeling is box view mode and then i check the shape in smooth view mode so 80 percent is this i'd say at least and 20 percent is this so if you make smaller adjustments here you need to go back here and check that that is still looking okay uh, that's <laughs> that's i would say that's rule number one for uh, t-spline modeling well actually rule number one should be you should only have quad faces i'll get to that in a moment but you can also change the keyboard uh, combination. On a Mac, that's Control-1 and Control-3 and Control-1. And on a PC, that's Alt-1 and 3. And you can also change to 2, That's but I, I find that less useful on, in Fusion 360. So we need another point because we can see here this is an N-GON, right? This, is, this has more than four edges or more than four vertices. So... I'm going to cut a line from here to there and then I'm going to select this point here and move it out a little so it starts sort of resembling a box shaped um, circle if that makes sense. So I think I'm going to also move that line up just a tad and move that just up a tad. Okay so now we have sort of a basic shape and um, if I use another software such as Blender, I could rapidly move forward um, because what I would do is I select this and say bevel edge. You can also do this in Fusion 360, but you can already, it, it shows you how it creates these, these beveled edges. And the problem with Fusion 360 is these are not equidistant. So if you have straight line segments, they all have the same distance from each other, but you can see up here, they're not equal um, or not an equal distance apart from this line, but they're proportional along that edge. And uh, yeah, that's fairly useless, to be honest. Um, it creates those in a way that, that is just not useful. But maybe we can change that afterwards. So I'm going to use that anyway. because I can grab these edges and just move them back down or just leave them there. But generally, we can see that it deviates from the shape here from these edges that are initially made. So, and uh, let me just move these edges down, back down a little bit to their original location. So Fusion is very picky in what I can select. 
when I use this uh, flat. And so in order to move those along that axis, so to speak, I'm going to change the coordinate space to selection space. And apparently I can't use, there's really no normal direction in Fusion 360, or if that's what it's supposed to do, it's just not working well. Um, so that's another reason I personally don't use Fusion 360 for this kind of stuff very often. Um, because it just lacks certain tools that you get really quickly used to when you work with a software tool like Blender. So anyway, we have these lines cut in these edges and I'm going to select this and hold the shift key and double click that and I just move this down. So that shift, holding shift and double clicking on that second phase selects the entire loop here. So I just move this down by uh, let's give that 1.5 and if we change to finish form or we also can just go back to smooth view mode we can see yeah that looks okay but it looks you know these lines look kind of wiggly and deformed and this doesn't really form a good arc so I'm going to go back into box view mode I'm going to select that line and delete it. So now I have my end gone back. I said earlier we don't want that so we have to cut in a few other lines and so I'm gonna cut it from here to here and from here to here. Okay. So now we go back yeah, that looks horrible. Um, so that's somehow specific to Fusion 360 because it puts, it gives us these, where well, the red stars are bad stuff, right? I'll explain that in a moment. The yellow stars simply mean that you have an, a vertex here where more than five or more than four edges join. So this, you know, four edges is regular geometry and five edges joining in one point, that gives you a star point, but that's not necessarily an issue. But the red points here means there are vertices that are more or less coincident within that tolerance here, but they're actually not joined together. They're not welded together. So you click on auto repair and that does something that also doesn't exactly look great. Make uniform. And then uh, utilities, repair body. Okay. So I guess if you first use um, make uniform and then auto repair, that, that works better. But now we have our shape back. That's how that uh, indentation would look like. But there's another indentation in, in your image. And I'm going to go back to box view mode. And I'm going to insert another edge here. So select this edge, insert edge, and I move this down here, maybe about here. And if I use bevel edge on this one here, and in order to get these one, two, three segments, you have to change this to three segments. And it looks to me they're also not going to be all centered around this line, but offset to the side. So that's a second gripe that I would have with the bevel tool. Which again, I, that's a reason why I use uh, Blender for these kinds of things. But then Blender can be quite a bear to learn as well. So I'm going to select this face, this face, and this face. Edit form. And just also move this down one and a half millimeters, 1.5. All right, so finish form, and there you go. So um, let me just go to surface and just turn the surface normal around. So we have the shiny on the outside, we like shiny. And uh, if you don't want to see those lines there, they're not a problem, they're, they're just fine. So 
that shows you uh, gives you a better appreciation of how that uh, how that would look like and um, one thing of advice though um, if you want this more in a pillow shape you need to put this in a pillow shape before you add all these lines so these lines I would consider that secondary detail you know these indentations but the pillow shape is your overall form and you design those you design the overall shape before you ever um, before you ever start cutting in these lines so in this case it might still work um, but you just have more polygons to select so how would I do this um, let me see pillow shape um, I would probably insert an edge here and insert an edge here if I would want to stay with that same um, size and weld vertices with that to here, that to here and then I select that actually no and move this down a bit Um, you can also, while you're in the edit form dialog, you can, uh, if you click on selection options, you can change that between smooth and, uh, um, and box view mode here. So another way to um, give things a little bit more of a, huh, let's say, organic shape, once you have actually put in detail, um, is you could go ahead and I just select the inside here, um, but then all of the inside, oops. And this is, you do that if, uh, if you already have added detail, but still wanna make minor shape modifications, like you want that pillow to be pillowy or, I don't know, that's a word. Anyway, you can click on soft modification and uh, I don't see that previewed here. What the heck? There we go. So, and the, uh, the red and white gives you the influence of how that goes. So you can pull that out and it grabs more vertices. So these ones are okay. So, and you can also change the shape of which the influence is. I'm gonna use this one here. And then you can see, you can pull that out a little bit more smoothly, All right? And, uh, well, There you have it, your pillow here. And yeah, you see like these surface artifacts when you, uh, when you turn this around, uh, that's just screen um, tessellation artifacts. You just can click on display detail control and set it from fixed to high. And then uh, that should look pretty smooth here. So hopefully, hopefully this helps.